Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51 Centre show about women reshaping our world. This week we're taking a look at how organisations in two neighbouring countries are using novel methods to improve the status of women. In India, we see how female mediators have been employed to help those affected by domestic violence. Also, how a group of young Pakistani women are risking their lives by teaching their younger sisters to stand up for their rights. And we meet the group's founder, Gulalai Ismail, who's in Paris to receive the Shakshirak Foundation Prize for Conflict Prevention. But we begin in India, where one district in the northern state of Uttar Pradesh has witnessed an alarming rise in violence against women. For example, in the last two years alone, rape cases have increased by some 43%. Faced with an epidemic, local police have decided to hire 70 village women to act as mediators in cases of domestic abuse and assault. Our team on the ground headed out to meet them. For two years now, Usha has been helping battered wives in this village. For a long time, she worked in the fields. But today, she's widely respected because of her work with victims of domestic violence. Hello, how are you? Jamanti was tortured by her alcoholic husband for years. It's left her traumatized. My husband never listened to me. If anyone said something about me, be it gossip or a simple remark, he didn't try to work out if it was true. Instead, he just beat me like a madman. There was blood everywhere. One day, Jamanti heard about female mediators who travel from village to village to help women like her. An initiative of the local police, there are 70 such women, often referred to as friends of the police. We tried to find a solution for this couple, and we summoned them to the police station. They sat down, they discussed, and we pushed them to find an agreement. Now it's OK. Her husband has changed. But if he starts again, we will take action. In Indian cities, women are equally vulnerable. In New Delhi, the number of complaints about harassment have doubled in one year. Yesterday, a three-and-a-half-year-old girl was raped in Delhi and left to die in a ditch. The day before yesterday, a four-year-old girl was raped in Delhi and she was murdered brutally. For the past one year, we have been pleading the government. No action has been taken, no steps are being taken, and rapes are continuing in Delhi with impunity. Most cases of domestic violence rarely lead to an official complaint. Still, if the figures show a dramatic rise, it is also because every day more Indian women agree to testify. And for more than a decade, the Pakistani-based organisation Aware Girls has been working to empower women. Thanks to the story of Malala, the world these days is very much aware of how dangerous it is for fighting for women's rights in a country steeped in conservative values. The group's extraordinary efforts have been recognised here in France, where they've just been awarded the Sheikh Chirac Foundation Prize for Conflict Prevention. Our correspondents in Pakistan went to watch them in action. Gulala Ismail was only 16 years old when she founded Aware Girls with her sister back in 2002. But their work has put them in harm's way in Pakistan's conservative society. When you want to change the system, those who benefit the most from things staying the same are those who fight back and hurt you. They smear you and do everything they can to intimidate you. Here in the northern city of Peshawar, Members of the NGO meet every week. Here we're talking about young people and the changes they must confront while growing up. We're also looking at how men and women relate to each other. Jahangir comes from Pakistan's tribal belt near the Afghan border. Aware girls changed his mentality and he's hoping his family will do the same. First, I tried to convince my family. My brother is here with me today. He's also an activist. Little by little, people are changing the way they think. Before, my brother was very conservative. 
In the courtyard, Gulalai sits down with a group of domestic servants. She's here to make sure they know their rights. Before coming here, we didn't have any days off. Then we spoke with our employers and convinced them to give us time off on Sundays, as well as raising our salaries. Aware Girls has already had an impact on the lives of thousands of women in Pakistan, helping them get educations, jobs and even protection against HIV in a society dominated by men. And joining me now in the studio is the founder of Aware Girls, Gulalai Ismail. Thank you so much for being with us and congratulations Thank on you, the it's award. an honour. Um, you started this organisation at the mere age of 16. I mean, given how conservative Pakistan is, how did your family respond? What did they think of it? Uh, I think Pakistan has changed a lot in the recent years and it was very different for me as a teenager than it is now. It was very different then. However, what uh, motivated me to start the organization at such a young age was when one of my own cousins who was aiming to become a pilot but was taken out of school and forced to get married to a man who was almost twice her age, that was a time that I realized that if I'm going to school and if I can um, aspire towards my dream, it's the reason uh, because I am from a privileged family and it's not a reality for every girl of my community. And I didn't want it uh, for any other girl to be taken out of school and to be married against her wishes. So that was the uh, th th that was something which motivated me. And then we started talking to other girls about how do we change our community? How do we make sure it doesn't happen to any other girl? And how may we make sure that every girl can follow her dreams? Now, Malala in fact, is one of your success stories, if you like. She attended one of your programs back in 2011 and sadly went on to be shot in the head by the Taliban. However, of course, then going on to win the Nobel Prize. But I imagine you've met many such Malalas in the course of your work. Young women in Pakistan, young girls especially, they are very passionate and motivated. They do understand at times that if there is inequality, they feel it and they do raise voice against it. There are, when we work with young women, every year we develop uh, discussion groups and uh, capacity building groups of young women and girls and out of every group, like there are tens of girls leaders which work in their community, which give back, who give back to their community. There are many girls in Pakistan, many young women in Pakistan who are working to reshape their world, to make their communities a better place. They do understand that discrimination is not something natural, inequality is not natural, and we have to work towards making this place a better place. And they do understand now, they do understand that if they want to change the world for themselves, they have to speak up. Girls have started to learn that if they don't speak up for their rights, the world for them will not change. Uh, when you talk to young women about their rights, when is it, you know, when do they experience the aha moment? You know, when do the scales fall off their eyes? Uh, well, uh, when girls come to our programs, initially they come with a lot of inherited and internalized um, ideas from the society which they have learned while growing. But once they start learning about their human rights, when they once they start exploring their capabilities, it's the aha moment. I will give you an example. We were once doing a training on political leadership skills for young women. And on the first of the training, when we asked those girls that what do you think that what is the role of girls and young women in the politics, uh, most of them said that politics is about men, it's a dirty job, it's not about them, they don't want to be politicians. And then on the third day of the training, when we took them to the parliament to see how legislation happens and to see that how uh, our, elected, um, our elected parliamentarians, how they do legislate for us, once they went and experienced that, they came back and next day we asked them, who wants to be a politician? And all of them raised their hands and one of them said, I want to be the Speaker of Assembly. Because it's different when they have not explored what equality is, when women have not explored what freedom is, they may not value it. But once they explore freedom, once they explore uh, and experience empowerment, that's their aha moment. They want to be empowered for the rest of their life. So clearly you make efforts to get young women to think about entering politics. And the other key thing is for them to go back to their towns and villages and stop others from becoming radicalised. That is very dangerous work, especially when you think of a group such as the Taliban. Uh, 
Uh, when we work, we use our indigenous knowledge. We link young people back to their indigenous history. The northwest of Pakistan, which today is known as one of the most dangerous places in, in the world, it was once some decades ago, it was a land of non-violent movement. We had a great local hero known as Bacha Khan and also known as Frontier Gandhi, who was mobilizing people all around the northwest of Pakistan to use non-violence as a tactic for freedom. So we, we are a land of non-violence. We have indigenous history of non-violence, and we use that indigenous knowledge, indigenous role model to connect back young people to the history. And once you use indigenous knowledge, local skills, it's very easy for young people to accept the facts. It's very easy for them to accept non-violence and to accept an alternative way to violence. Yourself are also at risk. Uh, well, when you work on changes, uh, on changing the status quo, when you work on uh, when you work on challenging uh, Taliban, who are one of the uh, most violent groups in the world, when you go and challenge them, and we, when you try to prevent young people from joining them, then of course it uh, it's risky. And because we have a high impact, there are actors or groups who want us to who want to silence us. And uh, I think that self censorship is not a good option. They want they they want to create fear so that we may silent ourselves and we and so that we don't work uh, for peace uh, but every time there is something we just increase uh, the amount of work we do we expand our program you're clearly not afraid uh, no because uh, I, I think that uh, if you are afraid then fears lead to hatred and our world needs uh, bravery and courage Gulala, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there thank you so much thank you for having me thank you and that's it for now. And if you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page. That's France 24, full stop 51%. Or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far. And please do keep those comments coming in. So until our next show, bye for now.